This is Twit. Quote, solid state of fear. Euro boffins bust open SSD BitLocker encryption. It's really, really dumb. And then if that doesn't bring the point home, quote, security experts frantically face palming at stupid design. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, the register article is harping on Microsoft a lot. Um, yeah. The thing is, though, it's not completely Microsoft's fault. So the paper itself, which is linked in, uh, in near the beginning of the register article, uh, very interesting. Basically, they went through some different SSDs made by some made by Crucial, some made by Samsung. I'm not sure if they just uh -huh. had enough juice, juicy content to make a nice paper at that point and just stopped trying to do other SSDs or that those, you know, those two makers were the easiest to get into. But yeah, they were really freaking easy. Uh, these guys took these SSDs. In some cases, they kind of probed around and used this thing called the JTAG header, which is like a way to debug hardware. Um, you know, this assumes you have physical access to the SSD, but yeah, I mean, you're trying to get into encrypted SSD, you're going to have physical access, right? Well, these guys dumped the firmware from the drives, analyzed it, saw what made it tick, did some reverse engineering. And in a lot of these cases, there were some very simple, just, I mean, one of the most easy cases was there was just a vendor specific command, uh, which is just pure security through obscurity, right? It's, uh, you're just relying on the fact that nobody would know what this super secret command is, right? And if you ran and this particular kind so of... Well. Yeah. And if you just happen to know what this command was to send to the drive, uh, and you did so, then it would unlock another set of commands, one of which would allow you to just like extract the block of cryptographic data from the drive. In other words, like the, the chunk of information that contains the things like the passwords or hashes that you would need to be able to reverse the passwords and and get access to the data and just unlock the drive. Um, yeah, I mean, just all around, there was just all sorts of holes that these guys poked. Uh, and they just systematically went through, you know, they went through three different crucial SSDs. They went through four, uh, four different Samsung SSDs, you know, very common ones, 840, 850 Evos. Uh, the T3 and the T5, which I think are the, the most damning of this whole thing is that Samsung T3 and T5 are external SSDs. Those are the ones that users are most likely to enable the encryption on because they don't mm -hmm. want just someone coming across this drive and just being able to read it. Uh, now, granted, if your average Joe came across this drive, they're probably still not able to read it. They still need to know what the password is. But if there's somebody who knows their way around some hardware, like these guys do, and mm -hmm. have any sort of reverse engineering experience, they're going to be able to figure out a way in. Right. It's almost like Jurassic Park, right? Like life will find a way. Life always finds a way, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> line from the movie. It's that's how security stuff tends to work. Right. Like just ask uh, Steve Gibson, you know, there's there's someone will find a way if there's if there's a way in that exists, it will be found at some point. It's just a matter of time and effort, basically. Uh, and in the case of a lot of these while these drives are all conforming to some form of a Opal standard or an Opal is just the, uh, one of the standards, which you would, uh, the host would communicate with an SSD and enable or disable, or, you know, enter your password for, for encryption. Uh, they can claim to conform to that standard, but if the, sta if the way they've implemented it is not secure, uh, <laughs> it, it might as well, it might as well not exist. Right. Um, and then the part of this that that uh, Windows comes into play on is that uh, it's in relation to BitLocker. So if you had right. an SSD or a hard disk uh, connected to your system that did not support any of these cryptographic standards, any like Opal or any of those things where the drive tells the system, hey, I can do this encryption thing, right? If none of that's there, Windows will just do its own encryption. It'll have to use a CPU. On more modern systems, there's like an AES-256 engine inside like Intel and AMD CPUs. Like there's there's commands, it's accelerated, but there's still some sort of overhead. All of your data has to pass through the CPU before it, you know, goes to and from the disk. It's a little bit extra work, which is the part of the reason you want the hardware to be able to do it, right? It's way more ideal if just the SSD can just take care of it. You give the SSD your password, it unlocks it, good. System loses power drive is protected again basically um but there's there's no mechanism to tell microsoft uh or windows hey 
Uh, I understand you could do this yourself. Uh, I don't want you to ask the drive if it can do it. And if the answer is yes, just let the drive do it. Like, I don't want you to trust the drive. Like with security, usually the best thing is trust no one. Uh, and in this case, you know, don't trust anything or trust as few things as possible, right? Um, so Microsoft's default in this case has just been, well, if the drive says it's Opal compatible, just, yeah, sure, do that. That's great. Um, and in an ideal world, that should be the right answer. You should be able to trust it. But as this paper proves, uh, turns out, you know, these guys haven't been that great uh, at implementing this. Um, and I, I wouldn't just, you know, voice caution towards uh, Crucial or Samsung here. Like any of these guys, there's probably vulnerabilities. Uh, so we were talking about this on the podcast that uh, Ken brought up a really good point. Like it's Opal shouldn't just be like the standard that people follow. There should be some sort of a certification Right, there should be some sort of an independent body, uh, main, probably including guys like this that that did this work. There should be somebody that can actually review in confidence the firmware or whatever the software is that's on the SSD that's responsible for handling the crypto. Uh, let someone validate that stuff. Let someone else look at your code. Um, no. You know, in a manner in a manner of which they're not going to redistribute your code, right? And where it's kept in confidence, but there will let be someone no review it. Just trust well, us. But I think they really should be doing, you know, they really should be some kind of a auditing mechanism in place here. Just, you know, just to, in a lot of cases, it's it's better for uh, any company. Like if you're able to say, hey, well, I know this, this you're, independent you're, guy, like looked at this. And, to the choir here. I just find a lot of companies, when you suggest that perhaps they should have their products audited, look at you like you're some sort of magic space weasel that just teleported into the middle of their office and took a magic space weasel dump in the middle of their desk. It's just, I find it unfortunate. It, I also find companies that believe in security through obscurity to be unfortunate. But look, we've got some sort of, you know, uh, Venn diagram of, of security errors being found yeah. in the storage being deployed in laptops. Not like you store important information on a laptop that you might actually want to remain secure, uh, especially in the case of government employees, organizations that are subject to uh, industrial espionage, yeah. 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 I'm I mean, it's, you know, so it's every, you know, th this, it's worse than I thought it, it could have been. Um, and, uh, given that, and given that this paper's out now, I really hope that everybody kind of steps up their game and, uh, and fixes that problem and makes it so that you should be able to trust Opal, right? You should be able to trust a drive that says that it can do encryption. Uh, and then when you flip that on, it should work and it should be, it should be harder to get into than just a few security researchers poking around, <laughs> uh, you know, well, poking I mean, poking around the parts, poking around the parts of the drive that are just accessible generally, right? Just like a JTAG header, like almost every bit of computer hardware has some form of a JTAG header on it. Uh, it's it, a, you I mean, it's not, always awkward. You know, it's not even. I, I'm okay with security researchers poking around and finding things because some security researchers and pen testers are extraordinarily intelligent, intelligent and sophisticated. What I have an issue with is somebody downloaded the service manual and through our secret commands. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, like you know, so in some cases there was just a there was just like a. Uh, I think they extracted. It was something like one of the commands, or it just like contained like the email address of one of the guys that worked at the company, and then all and then a long string of numbers. It was just like, yeah, this like is this awful. is just this is just the way in, right? Like this is if you do this, so you, you know, potentially making it so easy that in the end, once you've figured out, you might have had to use the JTAG and other kind of creative ways to to get to the point of figuring out the exploit. But then right. once you have it figured out, it's potentially so easy that it could just be run. Without any special tools, without just with the drive connected to a system, you could potentially hit it with these uh, special commands that then unlock other commands that you can issue, and then just the drive just gives up the goods. It's just like, oh, you want my you want my block of flash that contains this, all the security keys for the drive? Here you go. Like, d yeah, it's it's just yeah, no. that's not good, right? It's, it's no. the same kind of thing that same kind of thing that Steve Gibson when he comes across just this thing that was just like. A no-brainer. Why were you guys doing it this way? Kind of thing. You just—it just kind of blows your mind. Like you don't understand why. But you know, at the end of the day, some of these guys were were just trying to get this thing impl implemented. 
Yeah, uh, I, and that I mean that's part of the issue is is I, I'm in the process you know teaching the boys math and uh, teaching the boys to double check their answers and verify. Um, you know, is something, and to give yourself the time to do that is, I think, critical. And it's critical when you're doing math as an 11-year-old, and it's critical when you're doing hardware design. It's critical to, when you're engineering hardware implementations. And all too often, it just doesn't get done. And the end result is exciting surprises that make you realize that your secure devices aren't. And that's the kind of surprise I don't need. Yeah. And just, just going through some of these, it was just, it was to the point where, the person responsible for set for doing the development work at that level when this thing was, you know, being figured out, somebody in the room had to ask that question, or it, sh it should have dawned on somebody, right? Like, well, we have this special <laughs> command, we have this special command that just lets us into this, and potentially couldn't they just then get this other information and then reverse the password? Like, like it's there, right? It, it's it's just a feature that they had of the drive that they really should have locked that down. It's similar to the kind of things you hear about with. Uh, you know, backdoors into uh, what's the Intel uh, chipset level thing that was like ring minus two access to the hardware, the Intel management engine backdoors and whatnot, where it was just a thing that no, never thought anybody would try to access the thing that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're just relying on the obscurity of it. Oh, yeah, just nobody would ever figure this out. Well, somebody figured it out. <laughs> so now they got to fix it.